Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about the third episode of Quiet on Set, the docuseries. Listen here, y'all need to go and watch episode two and watch episode one of our reviews and of the real show. Mm -hmm. It's a great show. It's a great docuseries. Um, it actually gets some insight. Um, do you know how you have a feeling and you don't you don't really have proof of the feeling? Yeah. But then a docu series like this come out, you were like, I knew it. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically what this docu series is. Things that you probably already knew but didn't have the actual facts and evidence of. But like you know, subscribe, like, share, comment, let us know what you think, and Blair, let walk us through this. Well, the child actor that was assaulted was Drake Bell. Unfortunately. So Drake booked the Amanda show and everything was cool until they moved from Paramount studio to Nickelodeon on sunset. Now here's the thing about it. The Paramount studio was basically the main studio for Nickelodeon. Yeah. Right. Dan became so successful that they basically built him his own studio, his for, own his studio for his shows. Mm -hmm. So at this point, Dan is the most powerful man in, in, in Nickelodeon basically. The things that he wanted to achieve with Amanda, with the whole what I like about you transitioning, he went back into his roots, mm -hmm. and now he is the man. Yeah. Dan the man. Mm -hmm. So that's where Nickelodeon on Sunset came from. Yep. So Brian was a dialogue coach, and he knew a lot about the history of Hollywood, yeah. and Drake really enjoyed talking to him about that. Um, they started to use him as an acting coach. Mm -hmm. Him, uh, His dad was uh, the one who set that up with him yeah. um, because he, you know, coached people like Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. like, you know, really made great stars out of these child actors. Yeah. So, but Drake's dad had always had Drake within eye distance. Mm -hmm. um, and he, Brian would always have the coaching at his house, but the dad was always present. Yeah. So just, mm -hmm. so just to give a little backstory on Drake, right? So during this time when Drake was a, a little child, his mother and his father was getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. They got divorced, right? In that during that time, Drake was always in film, doing commercials. He had think he did Home Improvement at one point. He he always was basically in these cameos and things like that. It was basically his destiny to become a star on TV because he started at such a small age. Because going to your point about Brian Peck in the in the history of Hollywood, it kind of leads into what Drake's like. Because Drake, like I, I love black and white film back in the day. So Drake was always a historian of these type of shows, these type of movies. And then you got Brian over here that basically knows about the history of Hollywood. So it's like a match made in in hell. It seemed like you know. Um, so in the divorce, because Drake was in this industry and things like that, that's how Drake and his father grew closer. Yeah, taking it, him to auditions, so, exactly and driving him all around, and exactly. that's really what grew their bond, and, it, and got they got closer. Facts, facts. Mm -hmm. So Drake Bell and his father was like this. Yeah, was like this. He said, "Look, my routine every day was I pick my son up from school three thirty, and then we'd be out at auditions doing all this work, working and things like that. Won't get back home until ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night. We do that every day. He loved it. Yeah, and that's basically was the bond." that Drake Bell and his father had. So that's why the father was like, I always kept him within the eye distance. Mm -hmm. Even when Brian Peck wanted to have coaching at his house, I was in the room. I can see him. Things like that. Right. Yeah. Well, the dad started seeing that Brian was hanging around Drake too much. Yeah, yeah. He would pop into his dressing room, try to touch him, mm -hmm. help him put clothes on, yeah. putting his arm around Drake's waist or his shoulder. Mm -hmm. The dad saw it. He thought it was weird. Mm -hmm. And he did speak up. Yeah. And apparently he noticed, you know, that um, I guess on sets he was doing the same thing with Leonardo DiCaprio, maybe mm -hmm. from old footage and things like that when Leo was around Drake's age. And he was like, and he he was did like the same thing. Yeah. And he was like, okay, this is really weird. So he went to production to voice his concerns. Yeah. Production said, he's gay. You're homophobic. He's just a touchy feely guy. Wow. Like, something's wrong with you. So the dad didn't take that. Mm he started telling more and more people on set. Then he was ostracized. So he just backed off because yeah. which was said by a lot of the people, they want to be on people's good side. Yeah. They want their child to have a fair shot at this acting career that they want and love so bad. And also 
people don't want to be ostracized. You want to be able to talk to people and network mm-hmm. and have good relationships. Mm-hmm. So he backed off once he saw that nobody was taking him seriously and it wasn't making a difference. It's, so, but Blair, you told me as a parent I should speak up for my kid. Yeah, you, you told me as a parent that I should basically, if I see something, say something. Say something, see something. All the above. Yes. But when I say something and when I see something. I get blackballed. I get told to back off. I get ostracized and things like that. Like, so what can I do in this instance? I say, oh, the hell well to that. Okay. <laughs> I would say another word if we wasn't on camera. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, the hell well. Uh, I'm ostracized. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That's fine. Uh, you pulling your kid out. Oh, absolutely. You pulling Drake Bell out. Now, now mind you. I, I don't care. Drake is. I a, don't care. He's the. N- n- listen here now. I don't care. C- can I build? Because you, because we could shut all this down. Can I build the ship before and- <laughs> you sink it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is Drake Bell. This is. There was Amanda Bynes. We know Amanda Bynes was Amanda Bynes back in the day. Okay. Right. But this is Drake Bell we talking about. This is somebody who was basically in the industry from the time he was three. Right. You get what I'm saying? He's basically the golden boy, the golden child. Basically, it's his destiny. You have been cultivating and basically grooming him as a parent. You gonna be a child star, child star. You wanna get on stage, you like music, you know, he played all this stuff. And now he's on the Amanda show. Now he actually getting some traction and things like that. And you, Mama Bear, go come and say, you know what, Drake Bell, this thing that I've been doing this whole time, you gonna now become whatever well let me get into further explanation okay i feel that no you should not allow one person to change the trajectory of your life okay so if one person is making your child feel uncomfortable or they're doing inappropriate things Mm -hmm. then i i would say that calls for you to speak out and to create distance between that person and your child so they're not able to touch your child or do anything disrespectful like that Um, but when it comes to the point that i'm speaking out and people allow this person to stay and i can't ensure the safety of my child on set then that causes for me to extract you. I'm sorry. And now you got to become... Because it's not just this one person. It's the whole entity that is not taking me seriously. So Drake Bell, the golden boy of TV, now got to become Drake Bell the dentist. I think that's an amazing career. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you got to learn how to pivot, baby. Okay. And you about to be the, the star dentist of all dentists. Oh, my gosh. And we about to work this thing out. Listen here. Okay. The other black. And let's get the same. Let's get the same um, veracity. I don't know if I use it in the right way. I don't think the, did, the tenacity. Let's let's get excited about dentistry school. Okay, we're pivoting. I think. <laughs> I mean, how do you feel? I think it's hard. Okay. Because I'm seeing things, and I and I go to my kid and I say, "Dude, you feel uncomfortable." And my kid's like, I, "No, I'm good." You get what I'm saying? I don't care what you say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I'm good. Like, You're not good. <laughs> Brian Beck is cool. He's a cool guy. You okay. know what I mean? So, <laughs> like, so it's like, I'm thinking about that time, Blair. Mm-hmm. To, if it was to happen today, I'd be like, you know what? I just go to Netflix. Okay. I just go to Hulu. I go to Amazon Prime. Damn it, I go to Tubi. Okay. You get what I'm saying? But this is the only kid show. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? This is the, I'm working with the guy. Mm-hmm. Who 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 makes kids stars? You yeah. get what I'm saying. At this time, Amanda's still Amanda. At the time before Amanda went over the cliff. Yeah. So basically, you see the evidence, and I think the problem isn't with what the father did here. I think the problem starts in the beginning. Okay. Where this this thirst and this admiration to be on stage and to be famous. I think. I can't blame the father here, but I can blame him from the beginning. Once you start putting things in your head, like, I'm going to get my kid famous. He's going to be an actor. He's going to do all these things. Once you start seeing a little bit of it, then you start to realize you do anything for fame. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because truth be told, even though he loved it, I did personally find a problem with my kid basically being out from 730 in the morning and getting home at 11 p.m. at night. What are we doing homework? We doing it on the set, <laughs> but but, but we, I mean we, we out for all these auditions. When are we doing homework? So my whole thing, do we have sports? But here's like, the, but here's the thing about it though, Blair. I, I'm trying to build this picture of 
if you're doing all these things and getting these auditions, mm-hmm. school is not a priority. Yeah. Most of these child stars, most of these celebrities and things like that, once they actually catch on and hook on, oh, they, they leave school yeah. altogether and they may take a GED test just to get like a diploma or whatever. But like school is no longer a priority. So with Drake at that small age, when he's getting these auditions and he getting these shows, they already know his path at that age is not school. Mm-hmm. They know like like this path of homework and things like that. This is just something that you have to do because by law, your kid got to be in school at certain points of the day and things like that. But what would you do? <sighs> Bro, I see. I don't know, man, because like with me, I wouldn't even put my kid on this trajectory to be this thing. Yeah. So it's like I don't want to be righteous or I don't want to be self-righteous seeing what I see on the show and be like, oh, I would have pulled my kid out. Like, like it's like, I, I don't know what I would have did at that moment. No, I absolutely would have. But, but I think that a lot of these people too are relying on their children to create a lifestyle for themselves. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that was his dad's situation, but mm-hmm. people are putting a lot on, on their kids to save their families mm. from poverty. That's true. And that is true. And I'm not putting my child in a position to support me financially. What if you have like a, a a male Beyonce? I none of that matters to me. Mm. Like to me, it's just like the well being of my child, their mental and their physical health and well being. Like I really could care less about what you know, fame or notoriety. Mm-hmm. I just want my child to be happy, but I also want them to do something to where they can feed themselves, pay the bills, learn a trade. I mean, I don't care. Just do something yeah. so that you can. Um, be a productive member of society and also be safe um, and not rely on having to be in certain people's good graces Mm -hmm. in order for you to make a living. Like, no, like I don't think anybody, especially a child should be in that position. That's true. Um, But I also would say if, if acting is really the child's passion and you know, this one person is getting in the way of it, then yeah, call the cops on this person. Let people know. Ring the alarm. I don't care if y'all don't talk to me. Listen, yeah. I mean, all of that. But I also feel like if I want to pull you out of acting in this capacity, maybe we can try Broadway. You know, not to say Broadway is perfect, but I'm just saying there are other avenues than to keep your child in this uncomfortable yeah, situation. I'll probably wait till you 18. I'll probably be like, hey, if you want to be an actor, well, how about you like go to school for it and then like. You be eighteen. You be an adult, so you can make your own decisions and things like that. But a kid yeah. actor is too is too sketchy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, go ahead. Well, Brian also um, started telling Drake that his dad shouldn't be his manager, mm-hmm. and he integrated himself more and more into Drake's life. Mm. Um, Dan would come to Drake's because he had a band, so he would come to the shows if it was convenient. Yeah. But Brian would go out of his way to make Drake shows, and that's crazy. So he even gave an example. Because all this is in California and things like that. He said that if I had a show in San Diego, Brian would drive up to San Diego to for the show. Yeah. Dan would see it if it's an area. Right. Like you get what I'm saying? Like, oh look, the big boss came to see me play. Yeah. But Dan but 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 Brian, this Brian guy, mm-hmm. it could have been anywhere. It could have been San Diego, it could have been San Fran, it could have been Sacramento. Brian go find a way to be around this. 14 year old Mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying and drake had it in his mind that oh it's just my friends coming to see me play Mm. as the parent i'm like you don't have friends over 18 (laughs) i don't care like you do not have friends have 40 something year old friends i ain't gonna hold you he's 14 you don't have friends over 16 right (laughs) (laughs) these people are not your friends like no um well brian wanted drake to have his 15th birthday at his house because i guess it was more centrally located and drake wanted it there as well um so there were some birthday cards that the dad found that were inappropriate from Mm -hmm. brian's friends and he was the dad was disturbed by that drake still really didn't understand the magnitude of what was going on drake didn't even know it, it 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 was there yeah now here's the thing about it do you blame the father at any point of this? Do I blame the father? 
Not necessarily, because I think a lot of people don't know what they would do in that position. I think he wanted. But 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 you just told me you will pull your kid out. I would absolutely do that. How many signs do the father? Now here's the thing: we're not blaming anybody except for the person who the did the person act. who did it. So yeah. so 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 let so let me get that disclaimer out the way, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm not over here trying to think. But what we're trying to see, I'm did, trying to see like who, like what were people's parts that they played? Like basically, mm-hmm. how many red flags does it take? Let me ask y'all. How many red flags does it take for y'all to actually like wave it? Because the father saw the touching, mm-hmm. the father saw him being close, the father sees all these things, and he sees these inappropriate cards now. At what point do you like? But I feel like that's the ego of men, honestly. You think so? Is to where men feel like I got it, I got a handle on it. I see what's going on. I'm not going to let nothing happen. You ain't got no ego. You're like, I don't know what's going on. I'm leaving. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> but here, but, oh. I'm not putting myself in a position to where I feel like, oh, I see what's going on, but I'm controlling the chess pieces. Also, because you're right. Because as time went on, Brian had wedged himself so deep into that relationship that Drake ended up firing his dad as his manager. And he was with his mom whole time. And and at that point, the dad had no handle on the situation. Now, watch he was this, nowhere though. to be found. Just just to build the boat a little bit more. Okay. Right. At this point, before he started building the wedge and things like that, with Brian, all these red flags. While you seeing these red flags, y'all, they are building your show, your kid show. Mm-hmm. They basically said you're up next. Yeah. So are you Blair? Like you know. Okay. How many times you got to ask me? I, I don't just, care about this stuff. They are about to build <laughs> your kid's show. That doesn't matter to me. Drake and Josh is literally a muff or, or, or like whatever way. And you you know everything your kid dream is about to come. It, it, it's about to come to pass. Your kid's dream. Not your dream. Your kid's dream. Are you? I'm going to tell my child, lean not on your own understanding. Oh my goodness. Okay. You just became religious. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is what you want? But sometimes God will redirect you. And that's why so. God gave us, well, a lot of people two parents. So when they can hate one, they love the other. Because okay? <laughs> I feel like I feel like one of the kids going to hate you because you're going to keep giving them religious things. And then you're going to tell them to do a trade. And you're going to tell them, and guess what? There's nothing wrong being a dentist. You know what I'm saying? They can be like, Mom, I can have my own show. We don't care. And I'll be like, listen. I'm yeah. like, if you get your own show and we're doing it the right way and you're not put in a position yeah. to where you're silenced that's or true. or you have to be in the good grace of somebody yeah. who might be an abuser yeah then fine no, right. if we're, listen, you know what I mean? i'm just playing devil's advocate like i'm not playing around mm-hmm. with people touching my kids that's facts like i'm not going to wait around and see how far this thing's gonna go that's like facts. we're not playing these games that's facts yeah go ahead okay <laughs> <laughs> well um yeah, as the wedge grew bigger, mm-hmm. um, Drake started avoiding his dad. Mm. Brian told Drake's mom, you know, some of the same things about the dad not being cool, the dad maybe trying to steal money from Drake. Mm-hmm. And they actually did have a lawyer come in, and there was no funny business no going funny on business. with the money. So, but Drake did fire his dad as a manager, mm. and the dad turned everything over to the mom. Mm-hmm. He said he's going to respect his son's wishes, but he did tell her, do not leave Drake alone with this Brian Peck man. Mm-hmm. And don't leave him unsupervised ever. Yeah. Brian ended up putting himself trying to as a manager in Drake's life. Yeah. And the mom didn't want to drive to L.A. So basically. Stop right there. <laughs> basically, you told me don't leave him unsupervised. I don't feel like driving. Brian want to do it. I'm going to let Brian do and it. And this is what happens when you. He would to, even stay the night at Brian's house. This is what happens when you have a terrible relationship. Because they went through a bad divorce. It wasn't like a good divorce. They had a a, a bad relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine me being the one to pick you up all the time. And just on some, because I don't feel like driving to L.A., right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to let this person, mind you, I was I haven't been around right on the work set. Mm-hmm. Who knows what the relationship was behind the scenes. But on the work set, I don't know how the operations go. But I'm supposed to just trust this stranger. And at this time, trust my kid. You get what I'm saying? Because that's the thing. That's that's also the the is it catch twenty twenty? Catch twenty two. Catch twenty two. That's the catch twenty two about kids working. You think they are adults. So you listen to what they say, 
because they're working and making money. So if if Drake is over here saying, "Oh no, Brian's cool. I don't care what you say." Yeah. Because even though you're working and you make more money than I probably will ever make. So? Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 you ain't grown. <laughs> no, so like I don't know who this Brian is. So basically out of the strength of the mother and the father not getting along, I can picture and imagine the mother, the father being like, "Hey, make sure you keep him around this do you Listen here, what this Brian guy do not let this Brian guy around him. Also, keep an eye on him because I already don't like you. I could probably be like, all right, whatever. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 she probably just brushed it off. Hey, hey, mom, I need to go to work. I don't feel like driving to LA. Why don't you ask that Brian guy to take you? Mm-hmm. And probably out of spite, who knows? I'm not guessing, but I'm guessing, yeah, right? It could out of be spite, any of that. I'm gonna show you that in our marriage, you ain't know nothing, and now in our divorce, you still don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. Brian, come pick up my son and mm-hmm. take him to your house, spend the night over there. All the above. And I'm just like, bro, mom, you failed your son. Mm. Like, 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 tr- truth be told, you failed your son. And that's not a guess. That's not me guessing. That's just the facts of, of the situation. And even like the laws of the land of a, a parent having to be yeah. there, like you were not there. No, you wasn't. So you failed. One morning, Drake woke up. Yes. In the and, middle of the night. And he woke up to Brian essaying him yes and he was 15 at the time yes brian was apologetic um but this was kind of like a cycle to where anytime drake needed to work on something he was always at brian's house Mm -hmm. and the abuse would get worse each and every time he said that like and this what happens when you're a kid to blair point you don't know what to do he says like what do i supposed to say do I supposed to call my mom and be like, this happened to me, and then I just wait at the house and wait for her to come get me? He's already in Los Angeles. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, if the father was around, it wouldn't even be in this situation. Sometimes, many times in life, most situations is about just avoiding them. Mm-hmm. Because many people want the answer once they end the situation, but sometimes the answer to the situation is just not being in the situation. Yeah. Sometimes I tell my friends and things like that. They say, "Hey, Chris, I'm in this. Da, 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 da. What should I do?" I'm like, "I don't know." And they say, "Well, you always know what to do." And I say, "No, I don't know. I I don't always know what to do. What I know is what situation to find myself in, and what situation is not to find myself in. Mm-hmm. And the situation that I don't find myself in is because I wouldn't know what to do if I was in it. Right. So I'd just rather not be in it. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't know what to do as 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 a kid in this situation. Mm-mm. I wouldn't even know what to do as a father in this situation. So I would try to avoid it. Keep that Brian boy <laughs> away from my son. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like I I can empathize and sympathize with Drake. Because at the end of the day, he's a 15-year-old boy who's stuck on the other side of town who probably can't drive. Yeah. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So he says that he remembers all of the um, abusive events, but everything else in his life at that time was a blur. That's crazy. And it's crazy because it overshadowed all of the success he had at that time. Mm. And that was the height of his career. Yeah. He prayed one day it would stop. He spent all of his time at his girlfriend's house because he felt safe there. Yeah. And the girlfriend's mom is actually the person who caught on that there was something going on between Brian and Drake. Yeah. So Brian was calling Drake's phone nonstop. Mm -hmm. Then he ended up calling the girlfriend's house phone. Crazy. Because he wanted to take Drake to Disneyland. They Mm. had been to Disneyland before with his friends. And, you know, this is something I guess he wanted to do with him again. Mm -hmm. So the mom gave the phone to Drake. And Drake was pretty much telling him, like, oh, like, trying to play it cool. Like, oh, I'm just going to chill here today. Like, Mm -hmm. I'll see you when I see you type thing. But he got mad and he started calling again. Mm. And the girlfriend's mom pulled Drake aside and asked him what is going on. And Drake, he tried to downplay it. He wasn't trying to get nobody in Mm -hmm. trouble. He wasn't trying to. Maybe he was even embarrassed by the situations. And. The mom says no. Some 40-something-year-old man doesn't call my daughter's boyfriend like that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Once you put it in that plain, simple terms, it's like, of course, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So he did eventually tell the mom that things were getting weird, but he was trying to distance himself mm-hmm. from Brian. So she took it into her own hands, called Drake's mom, mm-hmm. and she told her, look, I'm taking Drake to our family therapist because yeah. something weird is going on with Brian. And... um 
Drake realized that Brian was doing this mental manipulation with him mm. on top of the SA. Yeah. So with Brian being so integrated into everything, uh, Drake didn't want to speak up and possibly lose his career. He's right at the brink of. He's right in. He's right. In and the- this is right before Drake and Josh yes. started shooting. He said it was like a summer or some months before mm-hmm. things were about to get rolling. Yeah. So Brian tried to convince Drake um, that. Brian, that he should be the dad on the Drake and Josh show. So Brian tried to convince Dan. No, Drake. He wanted Drake. Oh, oh he wanted Drake to, to go talk to Dan. To Dan. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if y'all watch the show Drake and Josh, I don't remember most of it, but mm-hmm. Brian wanted to be the dad on the show, so he could even be even more be, be in Drake's life. But he was like, "Hey, I need you to go to Dan." Yeah. I need you to go to Dan, and he was like, "I ain't going no damn Dan." You get what I'm saying? And I guess that was the last straw Mm -hmm. for Drake. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day on the phone, he just exploded and just told his mom everything that happened. Mm -hmm. Mom immediately called the police. Yeah. There was an investigation. And Drake had to get Brian on the phone in order to get a confession. So he asked Brian, basically, I'm struggling with this. Why did this happen? Why did you do this? And then he just went on to give a full on confession, kept asking if they were being recorded. And here's the thing about it. Without in this episode of the documentary, they was trying to you can see just to build it out, Drake being uncomfortable talking about his own situation, what happened to him. Mm-hmm. And the producer even said, Whatever you're comfortable talking about, you know, you're free to talk about. And Drake Bell was like, you know what? Whatever you could think of, that's the worst thing that can happen to someone in this situation, it happened to me. Mm-hmm. So basically it covers all bases. Yeah. Whatever imaginary mindset that like your imaginary can go, Drake is basically said that happened to me. Yeah. And that's sad. Mm-hmm. That's sad. So Brian got arrested. Yeah. And Drake was hoping that no one knew it was him. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, I think he was like, because he was underage, he was used as like a John Doe in the case. Yeah. Um. So Dan called him and asked him if it had anything to do with him. Drake said yes, because he trusted Dan. Mm-hmm. And Dan said that you don't need to talk anymore. Um. He basically just said, if there's anything you need, let me know. Yeah. Um. Drake called his dad about Brian getting arrested. Mm-hmm. And dad was like, oh, I knew that guy was weird. Yeah. Thank goodness nothing happened to you. I knew that guy was weird. Sheesh. Until later on, when Drake actually did tell his dad that he is the reason that man yeah. was in jail. And at that time, Drake couldn't tell him at that moment mm-hmm. that it was him. And you can see the father break down in real time. He mm-hmm. said that wound is still fresh because he said he don't wish this on any parent. Right. Because he... At the end of the day, even though he was fired, a father do take it upon himself to still protect his kid. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So there is some self-blame that goes there. Um, and hopefully they work through it. You get what I'm saying? Even though I blame the mom and all these things for being so lenient with just people with your kids. Listen here. I hope the shame don't kill you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you get the peace you need and things of that nature. Hopefully everybody, hopefully this was a situation that some good could come out of this. Hopefully y'all at least on talking terms. Talk about the father and the mother and things like that. And y'all collaborating on just being just nice to each other. You because I mean, the thing is nobody anticipates the worst no. thing happening to themselves, let mm-hmm. alone their kids. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are blinded to the fact that they think that they are so special right. or this would never happen to me. You're right. That they don't even take any precautions. They throw caution to the wind. Yeah. They don't think about safety. So, and safety and, I mean, all those things are things that you do. So that way you don't find yourself or your children in certain positions. And I will say, yes, the person who did the crime is the person who did the crime. Yeah. But I can't help but feel um, a way towards people who played a part and not ensuring the safety of this child. You're right. Blair. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, the Drake and Josh, Josh show started shooting after Brian was arrested. Yeah. And the, during the first season, season it's... Well, <laughs> Take your time. Take your they time. got me mad, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Through the first season is when the trial was actually going on. But he said Drake was like, that was a necessary distraction yeah. um, to help him get through. And he also coped with the aftermath through drugs, alcohol, yeah. and... He was totally spiraling. A lot of DUIs in Drake's Bell's Mm -hmm. uh, past and things. And he says the only person that was really there for him from the network was Dan. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. This goes back to the couple episodes 
or even last episode where we was talking about that Dan is nice, mean, tyrant. You get what I'm saying? Like it's like he's bipolar and things like that. Um, I don't think this episode show Dan as a hero, right? But I will say this, that I'm happy that Drake had somebody to trust, right? I don't know if Dan was the right person to trust. I always say go with your father. Yeah. The one that you, the one that you fired. You get what I'm saying? But I do think even though Dan wasn't listed as the one that assaulted Drake, you're the boss. It happened under your watch. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is two people <laughs> within a four month span mm-hmm. getting arrested under your watch. Listen here. You gotta be you you gotta look in the mirror. You gotta look in the mirror and be like on some what am I doing wrong that this is happening under my watch? Because what's gonna happen is eventually y- your studio Mm-hmm. It's going to be known as the Freak House. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? What did you think of this episode about how Drake Bell told his story, how brave and, 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 and noble he was in telling his story? I mean, honestly, like, I appreciated him coming out and yeah. telling his story um, because I'm sure it is very difficult to come out and say, like, I'm sure there's a lot of shame around it. Of course. Um, even as a victim, I mean, somebody you know, did this to you, but it doesn't mean that you don't have these shame or guilt emotions and thinking of what could I have done differently when really nothing, you know, there's nothing you could have done differently. Like Mm -hmm. it was a multitude of people who failed you. Um, And it, I don't know. It was just, this was a hard, this episode was a hard watch. It was a hard watch. It was a hard watch. It was a hard watch, Mm -hmm. but you know, hard watches are definitely um, needed because like I said, I'm the type of person that don't have to go through things to learn lessons from it, listen here, I got a couple businesses myself. One thing I'm going to learn or one thing I'm going to implement for sure, even though uh, the only woman employee I got is Blair, <laughs> right? Listen here, man. Women is going to be, <laughs> listen, <laughs> we have a Women Wednesdays, okay? <laughs> I feel very respected on my job. It, exactly. So like, mm-hmm. like, like, like it, it, has, it has to be like seeing how people mistreat people. And like me having the benefits of not being there, I can watch it like basically play out and things like that. Yeah, You're like I'm, I'm not even gonna play with. I'm y'all. not even gonna play with y'all like that. No. <laughs> like you get what I'm saying. Mm-mm. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pay you more. You yeah, know what I'm saying like, and then like with kids, if if listen, whenever there's kids around, where's your mama? Where's your mama, boy? But see, to me, like this just puts me in a mindset of I don't want nothing to do with kids. Oh man, <laughs> like I like I don't like because I don't know. Um, you gotta start treating kids like stray dogs. Like, who dog is this? Exactly. Who is this? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Somebody come get this baby. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and not to say anything negative about kids, but I'm just like, number one, like you can't, like you should not have a close relationship with children as an adult. Like nah. I'll say in this. And the instance that, yes, there are, like, your nieces and nephews, your godchildren to where you want to. Oh, yeah, to. because this stuff happens in families, too. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, in these relationships, you want to pour into the children, into your life. Um, and so you want to have a close relationship with them. But at the same time, like, I always think that there should be the parent who is still present in those situations. Yeah. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if I can know how to say it appropriately um i I think but i just feel that when it comes to relationships with children um the parent is still the primary like i I don't know i think we Mm -hmm. gotta get back to actually treating kids like precious like artifacts yeah things like that you know how you go into certain museums and then you could just like you know not to touch it you know not to like not to mishandle it it just like don't talk to it like, like, harshly like like, 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 like i just, think children are very delicate like don't yeah. don't talk to a kid don't touch a kid like even though and guess what 15 year old is still a kid yes and that's another thing don't be letting somebody being a teenager fool you to think that they're an adult no. they might be in the uh they more body precious. of an adult they but, more precious but they are still a child mm-hmm. they more yeah. precious because now they are impressionable and they can make their own decisions and don't even let me get into the adulting of black children are we gonna go there <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we well, might, I'm just saying, like, go it, it goes deep. No, I'm no, just no. saying, it, it can goes, go deep. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, 15, 16, even though they can make their own decisions, like, that makes them even more precious because they are impressionable 
And like any other kid, even when I was at that age, we think we know everything. And then, and you know, and that's when you, re- that's when your parenting really got to be strong. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Anything else on this episode? We got one more episode to go. Yeah, no, that's all I got. Listen here, make sure y'all subscribe, like, share your comments on the show. Watch the show. Watch the review. Leave a comment. Let's have a discussion. The show don't end because the video ends. It ends when y'all start commenting. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. Y'all be good. Bye.